Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well, and today guys, we're going for them lizard trinkets. We got Vampire Coast against Dinos, it's going to be King of the Dead on the Lizard Man and myself on Coast, so a little bit of a role reversal, I'm a little bit out of practice with Coast, but uh, I did rip off his build from the Great Anticity, so we played a couple games, and uh, I wanted to give it a try myself and see how it goes. Essentially, the build is heavily designed to counter the Skink Oracle, which is very, very meta in this matchup. The Skink Oracle comes in, nukes your big monsters, uh, while the lizards swarm you with like stalkers and things like that. So I really like it. It's pretty cool. And if you guys haven't seen Anticity, make sure to check him out over on YouTube, which hopefully I'll remember to link down below. But if you don't, you just search Anticity and you'll find that bad boy. He's a very, very good player. So Double Gunnery White's backed up by the Lamprey's Revenge. Frontline is going to be Deckhand Mobs. And in total, we got four Sirenes on the flank. Sirenes are very tough to deal with. Uh, King does have some magic damage via the Banishment on the Slon, but aside from that, the rest of it is going to have to be Attrition, bringing them down. Two bombers, but uh, you guys are probably wondering here. I forgot to deploy them, so they're, they like I just left them in a little box here on accident. So they're going to get back in time, and it won't be any issue whatsoever. But two bombers, deal with infantry, pull arms here to uh, you know obviously just screen things out. And that is pretty much it, with Count Noctulus on foot being a big angry pirate with a halberd. What's not to like? So for King's army, I absolutely love it. He's got Skink Skirmishers, a front battle line of... Uh, more skinks, red crested skinks, just a ton of chaff, basically. Nothing really in the way of, you know, extreme quality. He was probably expecting me to be camping like towards the corner here. He does have chameleon stalkers here and some of the vanguard over there as well. So they're going to have a huge journey to make it across the battlefield. Now, what I really like about his build is the double gunnery whites are very meta, right? We've been seeing Anticity use those in faction wars, and I think every vampire coast player and their dog has been trying it. Uh, but the double stegodons here, man, this is. Uh, this is going to be a good answer, right? They can actually shoot back and outrange my gunnery whites with their long range snipers. Also, had I gone a cannon build, if I had three cannons, I could probably win this, but with just two, you might lose it, right? And typically, my preferred playstyle is cannon style, like defensive cannons and like letting them crash upon you. So, I really love this from King. He clearly knows how I like to roll. And uh, he's got a salon of life to heal up those big dinos with some salamanders in the back, the salamander hunting pack, I should say. So, light skirmishing out of the gates here. We do have some Chameleon Stalkers looking to engage here against the Sirenes, maybe, or just use their Precursor ammo, which will do a little bit of damage. That's certainly not bad, but uh, probably a little bit better trade for me, as the Sirenes really don't take a whole lot of damage from such units. Now, up on the top, the Sirenes are pushing as well, occupying the Skink Skirmishers, which is an okay trade for me. Uh, the amount of damage they're going to do per, you know, ammo is like, it's, it's with Invocations and other things like that kind of factored in. It's really not the worst trade in the world. So, the Sirenes are moving and a-grooving, getting in there. And uh, being shot down by all the skink skirmishers. And uh, man, look at the damage. It's adding up, man. But, you know, again, one invocation will counterplay pretty much all this damage. And the Sirenes, are they fast enough? 48 speed against 48. So they're pretty similar in speed. But overall, I should not be able to catch them with poison. Because somehow ghosts can be poisoned. Don't ask questions. Lizardmen, uh, they got their tricks, man. So trying to flank about with these Sirenes. And uh, I figured, you know, I wouldn't take too much damage from this volley fire. Although it is a little bit. But I was hoping that I could maybe corral the Salamanders and chase them with those guys. Granted, the Sallies do have a lot of speed. Now Noctilus moving forward, and look at the damage they've done to my crab. So the Lampreys Revenge have been absolutely nuked by these two Stegodons. I really, really like that pick. It very much reminds me of playing against like Kiali and Ali back in the day. He was one of the first people to kind of introduce me to that when I played Coast Cannons, because I, I had been, you know, dominating Lizards when Coast came out, doing very well, and then I played against Kiali and Ali, and he came in with the double Stegodon and did, did fine. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. I got plenty of healing and things like that. And my Gunnery Whites are now in range, so this is good. Now we can start trading. So my two Gunnery Whites are going to be unleashing a hellish amount of ammo here into the Stegodon, and they got plenty to go around. More bombardments going on the cohorts in the front from the bombers, and these ones shall be getting wrecked as well. And Count Noctilus, realizing he might have bitten off more than he can chew, is going to be running right now back to his friends. While we do drop a nice little summon of the zombie pirate deckhand mobs right there. And in the backfield, Sirenes engaging against Stalkers should be able to win that fight pretty easily. And these Sirenes are going to be swarming the cohort of Sotek and hopefully doing well. Uh, the other Sirenes have been able to get through the skink cohorts. What's good about them too is they defeat Saurus. So if your Lizardman opponent decides to go with the Saurus core, they win that fight. So um, against Skinks, they also win. Might not be quite as cost effective as they are against Saurus, but yeah, doing pretty well. I mean, occupying a lot of gold of my opponent's army here. So in the meantime, you can see one of these Stegodons being focused down by the two Gunnery Whites. And we're getting some good work in. The Salamanders, though, getting some nice uh, fire here into the Lamprey's Revenge, which is a little bit unfortunate for me. Nonetheless, Invocations will be coming up soon. I'm moving up my Gunnery Whites to follow his retreat and then also to get a big Invocation. In the backfield, the Stalkers that were deployed in the corners have finally made it in. But the Count Noctilus man himself, as well as some Halberds, should be able to make quick work of them with the support of some Bombers nearby, which hopefully can get back. And these bombers able to drop some uh, very nice fire here into these chameleon stalkers. Hopefully that will be enough to kind of break them, although their formation is a little bit loose. So they're not taking quite as much as I had hoped. Now, extra powder. Don't really need it on the gunnery whites right now, so just using it on the gunnery mobs because King's army has a ton of little chaff units like that. We do manage to use Roth's Moondial from Count Noctilus on top of the salamanders and force them back for a moment while we have a pistol summon, which is going to be chasing them as well. 
And here we do break off the uh, Stalkers. Perhaps uh, chasing them off the battlefield might be prudent, but I felt like pressuring the back line here was a better choice, and yeah, I think it should be. And here, the Zombie Pirate Pole Arms just doing their thing, man, just wasting the ammunition of all these skirmishers, although King finally does get his Irene down, but he had to use almost all of his ammo to do it. They also were able to take out a cohort in the process, so I would say a pretty good uh, run there from the Sirenes, which easily cut through the Red Crest of Skinks. But both armies do indeed have healing. Umbral Tide getting a nice Earth Blood also heals up the Stegodon there. And right as I was using a Wraith Storm, I think he used that because Noctilus, I think, had moved up to use a Wraith Storm. I can't quite remember the timing of that, but I think that happens at some point during the game. But yeah, really happy with the performance of the Sirens. They seem to be just absolutely beast mode this game here as they continue to grind through whatever they're fighting, right? And, you know, against a very good unit like the Cohort of Sotek, taking very little damage in return. The fact that they're unbreakable is quite nice. So Wraithstorm is going to be going down on the big uh, bloated toad here, and we get a fair amount of damage. Yeah, it does about four or 500 damage, which I can't complain about. Get them down to 48 from about 52. The Gunnery Whites are moving up, but look at the damage those Stegodons have been doing with their Ballistas. And also the Salamander Fire, really, really good. Just a torrent of Lizard Firepower going into my Gunnery Whites here. So now is the time for Invocation. I group up my units. Noctil is going to be dropping a big Invo right there, and I got to say that felt really, really good, because now we probably will creep ahead on the Bounce Power a little bit. And I noticed King's Ammo is running a little bit low as well. Here you can see his Stegodons are kind of in the, you know, 20-30% mark. Salamanders unfortunately had a little bit, but uh, overall, we're securing our backfield position okay. Just constant waves of Chameleon Stalkers moving in. Chameleon Stalkers, I think, are so good against Vampire Coast. Uh, the fact that they're stealthy and the Precursor Ammo does a fair amount of burst damage to a lot of the Chaff units, it's very, very, very strong. So, Sirenes, of course, able to defeat the Cohort of Sotek uh, reasonably well in combat. But when the Slon gets there, the Battletoad actually does magic damage. So suddenly my Sirenes are crumbling. I'm like, God damn it! The battle toad is too much to handle, so we're going to be running away. And I pull both sirens away from their respective engagements. I'm like, let's try and do a pincer and collapse here on the umbral tides. You'll notice I give an attack order there, an attack order here. Let's give it a good old college try and see how this goes. So the gunnery white's still trading downtown, but the healing of the lizards and just the raw HP pool has been kind of out trading me a little bit in terms of my gunnery white versus stegadon trade. But the sirens do get the collapse, and we do get on top here of the umbral tide. But a nice collapse from the rest of the lizard forces, including the cohort of Sotek. Noctil is also going to be committing to combat back here because he does have some summons. So we will be dropping a summon here right on top of the Chameleon Stalkers and the Cohort of Sotek. Just trying to occupy this force for as long as possible while my Gunnery White just kind of slow push up with my pistols and some of those other units. And yeah, Stalkers still moving in from all directions. I don't really see them until the last second. So they do get in here and cause me a little bit of grief. But nonetheless, we're, we're having a good time, man. Gunnery Whites are just pushing, man. His ammo is low. My ammo is pretty good. We're ahead on the bounce power officially, so you can see it was a little bit lower before, but we have finally pulled ahead as Count Noctilus here against the cohort of Sotek is uh, doing the dirty, getting in there and bumping and grinding. Shield of the Old Ones is active, and my Sirenes unfortunately got karate chopped a little bit, so that was probably a slight mistake, sending the Sirenes in there. I figured they would last longer, but, you know, Stegodons hit really hard, so even with, you know, 75% or whatever the mitigation is, they died pretty quick. Yeah, so it's all good. Anyways, Count Noctilus and company here fighting, and now he's being targeted by the Stegodon, which is being focused down by the Gunnery White. So the two Gunnery White shooting here looks like a banishment attempt. I have no more Sirenes, so using banishment on the bomber units, I do try and dodge it at the last second. Dodging with zombies is not the most uh, not the most fluid experience. Overall, it's a little bit tricky. But the zombie pirate Gunnery Mob bomber is going to be peeling back, going after the Chameleon Stalkers here, Skinks it looks like. And the Lamprey's Revenge, how are they doing, man? They're still quite healthy, although, man, that Ballista shot really, really hurts. God damn. God damn, Joe Rogan. But the Count Noctilus, the man, the myth, the legend, the great pirate, admiral, whatever the hell he is, is going to be retreating now. Ammunition on the Stegodons is running a little bit low. They're still very formidable in combat, but I got my Gunnery Whites and Crabs. I was feeling all right. So we're getting Count Noctilus back. He's getting poked down by a little bit of the skink ammo, but you can see they're running very, very low. And I was actually happy the lizards are running for me. I was like, yes, good, because I knew that... They're eventually going to come into combat, and, you know, depending on the, the mana that the Slon has, you know, things can get pretty spicy for sure. So Count Noctil is going to be pushing up and screening a little bit, going after the Umbral Tide. And God damn, it is so hot in L.A. right now. I'm literally sweating like a dog in here, even with the uh, air conditioning on. Damn. All right, the Lamprey's Revenge piling in. It's just, it's just dripping all over. The Zombie Pirate Jackhead Mobs Pole Arms able to fend off those guys, and the two Gunnery Whites, pretty respectable in combat. I don't know how they would trade against like a big a big boy, like these big Stegodons. Going to be a little bit precarious, but you know we'll certainly find out here in the later stages of the game. So, thankfully, we forced back the Umbral Tide a little bit with Count Noctilus, and now the Hard Knock Life. Going to be moving in to do a little bit of harass while the Gunnery Whites with their long rifles uh, just start shooting into the Slon. I couldn't reach the other ones, uh, so we do use a Wraith Storm here. This should actually do good damage. So, 3,100 HP down to down to 26 that's good about 500 damage give or take so very very nice uh, to get that damage on an sem especially 
So here is the shield of the old one. So lizards swarming in with pretty much everything they have, and they have a fair amount of chaff left on the battlefield. Mostly they're uh, skirmishers that are out of ammo at this point. But now this is the final battle, and I'm pretty clearly ahead on the bounce power right now. But it's going to come down to the Royal Rumble between the Stegodons and the remainders of uh, my, my crabs. That's basically it. Mr. Krabs, we do get one last invocation on our two guys. For some reason, I don't think it hit Lampreys or they were healing caps, so it wouldn't have mattered anyways. So Lampreys are kind of trying to pull back because the Salamander still had some ammo and we're doing some big work. Count Noctul is fighting up here in the front against the uh, Stegodon. Very unfortunate for me, though, because he's poisoned. He's being beaten down by the Stalkers, who also have pretty good armor piercing. So I was like, all right, we need to get out of here because, you know, this is going to throw the game potentially. Not throw the game, but it's going to cost me quite a bit if he just keeps getting beaten down by these guys. And I didn't bring Scab Scrates this game on the Gunnery Whites. Now, at this point, I was like, I wish I had Scab Scrape because I can't get all these skirmishers off. But there was a couple extra things I wanted to kind of force into the build, so I did cut it. Um, but overall, I think that could have been pretty useful here. Lamprey's Revenge fighting against the cohort of Sotek and the Skinks here doing uh, their magic. And this Gunnery White here is at negative 18. And suddenly the, the tide of the battle is massively changing as the Lizards do get in there. Noctilus is going to probably be paying the troll toll here. And my two Gunnery Whites are crumbling, just being swarmed. The Umbral Tide is even here in combat. And I just can't deal with the Stegodons. I mean, Count Noctilus is being bullied. He is their ideal target, right? He's armored infantry and uh, they have a ton of anti-infantry and a ton of armor piercing as well. So the Crabbo is moving in, trying to support Count Noctilus. I was pretty close to another summon as well. So having one more summon here would be quite nice for giving some uh, buffering against the just hordes of chaff units. My Gunnery White's piling in, trying to go after the Stegodon here, but he is a he is a meaty lad and is not going quietly into the night. This Gunnery White is crumbling, so is Noctilus, and that is going to be GG well played to King. That was a really fun match. Um, build, I liked, I, I liked Anticity's build. I think if he had been playing, the Coast probably would have won that. Uh, simply because I think his Cyrene play would have been much better. But uh, overall, I like the build. I think it's quite nice against a bunch of Lizard builds. Myself, personally, I would probably cut like one Cyrene and this Deckhand mob and uh, get like two dogs. I think just having two like Hound units is just so useful for like harassing and chasing things and, you know, maybe just one dog. I feel like you just need it. Like even to back charge the Chameleon Stalkers and break them. We've seen him do that many occasions, but overall, it was a fun match. King played really well, and I was not expecting this build, honestly. Look at that. 3,400 value here, 1,900. It was a thing of beauty, and I really had a lot of fun in that one. So, well played. We'll see you guys back next time. And uh, yeah, man, great lizard build. I'm looking forward to trying that myself. See you next time.